The Mos Maiorum is the unwritten code from which the ancient Romans derived their social norms. It is the core concept of Roman traditionalism, distinguished from but in dynamic complement to written law. The Mos Maiorum was collectively the time-honored principles, behavioral models, and social practices that affected private, political, and military life in ancient Rome, family and society. The Roman family was hierarchical, as was Roman society. These hierarchies were traditional and self-perpetuating, that is, they supported and were supported by the Mos Maiorum. The pater familias, or head of household, held absolute authority over his familia, which was both an autonomous unit within society and a model for the social order, but he was expected to exercise this power with moderation and to act responsibly on behalf of his family. The risk and pressure of social censure if he failed to live up to expectations was also a form of emos. The distinctive social relationship of ancient Rome was that between patron and client. Although the obligations of this relationship were mutual, they were also hierarchical. The relationship was not a unit, but a network, as a patronus might himself be obligated to someone of higher status or greater power, and a client might have more than one patron, whose interests might come into conflict. If the familia was the discrete unit underlying society, these interlocking networks counted that autonomy and created the bonds that made a complex society possible. Although one of the major spheres of activity within patron-client relations was the law courts, patronage was not itself a legal contract. The pressures to uphold one's obligations were moral, founded on the quality of fides, trust, and the MOs. Patronage served as a model when conquerors or governors abroad established personal ties as patron to whole communities, ties which then might be perpetuated as a family obligation. In this sense, emos becomes less a matter of unchanging tradition than precedent. Tradition and evolution. Roman conservatism finds succinct expression in an edict of the senses from 92 BCE, as preserved by the second century historian Suetonius. All knew that is done contrary to the usage and the customs of our ancestors. Seems not to be right, but because the Amos Maiorum was a matter of custom, not written law, the complex norms it embodied evolved over time. The ability to preserve a strongly centralized sense of identity while adapting to changing circumstances permitted the expansionism that took Rome, from city-state to world power. The preservation of the Amos Maiorum depended on consensus and moderation among the ruling elite whose competition for power and status threatened it. Democratic politics driven by the charismatic appeal of individuals to the Roman people potentially undermined the conservative principle of the MOs, because the higher magistracies and priesthoods were originally the prerogative of the patricians. The efforts of plebeians for access could be cast as a threat to tradition. Reform was accomplished through legislation, and written law replaced consensus. When plebeians gained admission to nearly all the highest offices except for a few arcane priesthoods, the interests of plebeian families who ascended to the elite began to align with those of the patricians, creating Rome's nobiles, an elite social status of nebulous definition during the Republic. The plebs and their support of popular politicians continued as a threat to the MOs and elite consensus into the late Republic, as evidenced in the rhetoric of Cicero. The Auctoritas Maiorum could be a vote to validate social developments in the name of tradition. During the transition to the Christian Empire, Symmachus argued that Rome's continued prosperity and stability depended on preserving the Mos Maiorum, while the early Christian poet Prudentius dismissed the blind adherence to tradition as the superstition of old grandpas and inferior to the new, revealed truth of Christianity. Values Traditional Roman values were essential to the Mos Maiorum. These include fides. The Latin word fides encompasses several English value words such as trust, trustworthiness, good faith, faithfulness, confidence, reliability, and credibility. 
It was an important concept in Roman law, as oral contracts were common. The concept of Fidus was personified by the goddess Fidus, whose role in the morning's Maiorum is indicated by the antiquity of her cult. Her temple is dated from around 254 BCE and was located on the Capitoline Hill in Rome, near the Temple of Jupiter, Pietas. The Roman attitude of dutiful respect towards the gods, homeland, parents and family was expressed by the word pietas, which required the maintenance of relationships in a moral and dutiful manner. Cicero defined pietas as justice towards the gods. It went beyond sacrifice and correct ritual performance to inner devotion and righteousness of the individual, and was the cardinal virtue of the Roman hero Aeneas in Virgil's Aeneid. The use of the adjectival form pious as a cognomen reflects its importance as an identifying trait. Like Fidus, Pietas was cultivated as a goddess with a temple vowed to her in 191 BC and dedicated ten years later. Religion and cultures Related to the Latin verb religere, to bind, religia is the bond between gods and mortals, as carried out in traditional religious practices for preserving the Pax Deorum. Cultures was the active observance and correct performance of rituals. Religious practice in this sense is to be distinguished from pietas and its inherent morality. See religion in ancient Roman imperial cult. Discipliner. The military character of Roman society suggests the importance of discipline as related to education, training, discipline and self-control. Gravitas and Constantia. Gravitas was dignified self-control. Constantia was steadiness or perseverance. In the face of adversity, a good Roman was to display an unperturbed facade. Roman myth and history reinforce this value by recounting tales of figures such as Gaius Mucius Scaevola, who in a founding legend of the Republic demonstrated his seriousness and determination to the Etruscan king Lars Posena by holding his right hand in a fire, Virtus. Derived from the Latin word ver, Virtus constituted the ideal of the true Roman male. Lucilius discusses Virtus in some of his work, saying that it is Virtus for a man to know what is good, evil, useless, shameful, or dishonorable. Dignitas and auctoritas. Dignitas and auctoritas were the end result of displaying the values of the ideal Roman and the service of the state in the forms of priesthoods military positions, and magistracies. Dignitas was reputation for worth, honor and esteem. Thus, a Roman who displayed their gravitas, constantia, fides, pietas and other values becoming a Roman would possess dignitas among their peers. Similarly, through this path, a Roman could earn auctoritas.